quick commerce story in India till two years ago didn't have many takers or believers and cut to 2024 people can't get enough of quick commerce whether it's investors or the markets in anticipation of some of these companies going public. Joining me now is the new kid on the block Adit Palicha of Zepto. Adit many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 it's always great talking to you but first up congratulations another uh, round closed today you've what uh, uh, managed to get 340 million in a follow-on round at a $5 billion valuation from General Catalyst. This on the back of the money that you raised literally two months ago yeah. at what, $3.5 billion. I mean, yeah. how, how do you go from 3 and a half to $5 billion in two months? First, Shishini, it's wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. And it's wonderful talking to you always. Uh, you know, on the round, so simple philosophy on this financing, right? We obviously raised quite a bit of capital. We're a well-capitalized company. But, you know, what, we, what I say internally is that the number one rule of life is if you've got, you know, high quality partners on the table and good capital, you should always take it. And, you know, we couldn't be more thrilled to have General Catalyst on board. You know, they are a legendary Silicon Valley investor. This is their first large investment in India since they, you know, integrated with Venture Catalyst and brought Neera Jirola on board. Yeah. Uh, so we're super excited. And Neeraj has been a personal investor in the company since our seed stage days. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, how we went from like 3.6 to uh, 4.95-ish uh, over the past two months. I mean, look, the company's growing pretty fast, right? Mm. So, we're, you know, we've grown in that 60-day period since our last financing. We've grown about 20%. Uh, you know, obviously, we're launching a lot more stores. And you might have seen some of the work that we're doing. We launched Nasik, um, Ahmedabad, Chandigarh. Uh, and I think, you know, the inflection point is becoming clearer and clearer to the market. Mm. And the downside is largely protected for it because, mm. like I mentioned last time, we've got 70% of our stores fully but on free cash flow positive, turning profitable faster and faster. And when investors saw the downside was protected for and, you know, the business was inflecting, mm. it just made for for uh, exciting assets. So that's why we, we got here. So you said that this round is really another exercise in strengthening the balance sheet yeah. pre-IPO. Yeah. And of course, when we last spoke, you talked about the possibility of an IPO in 2026. Yes. So you said you're well capitalized. Are you looking for more funds at this point in time or this is it for now? Look, for now, we, we're, not, we're not actually looking for capital even for But if some, if some comes your way, you're, you're open to that. No, look, I, I, I would say that, like I mentioned, it really depends on like, who the partner is, what the reasoning is, uh, where we are at the stage of the company. See, what I'm most sensitive to today is you know, all these financings, especially as a private company, are largely an execution distraction for management, right? And so you know, the reason why we took this capital is because it was very quick, diligence was already done. Mm. I doubt that there would already be like, a very quick amount of capital we pick up after this. So, you know, if anything even takes like a remote amount of management distraction mm. at like this phase of the journey, it's not really worth it. So, mm. so we are, I would say that the likelihood that we raise more capital in the imminent future is unlikely, but you never know, right? Well, like, you, you, you know, you've raised what, a, over 1.2 billion in, in the yeah. past year, year and a half? That's right, yeah. uh, And I, I think it's only phone pay that's come uh, close to that number in terms <laughs> of fundraise in the same period. So uh, what does this mean now in terms of expansion? What does it mean in terms of aspiration to move beyond the cities that you currently operate yeah. in uh, and expand the dark store network as well, as well as more categories to get into? Absolutely. So, you know, we are expanding. Like I mentioned last time, we're launching a few hundred stores, you know, across the next couple of months in, you know, not just existing cities in the metro mm. cities, but even in tier two, tier three cities. And just to give you an anecdote, right, we launched Nasik last month, right, Nasik is not known to be like anywhere close to a metro in terms of a market. Yeah. The stores that we launched there have hit a thousand orders per day in six weeks. Mm. It's the fastest that we've ever been able to achieve that. You know, Mumbai, Bangalore, Delhi took like three, four months to hit a thousand orders per day. Nasuki is coming in six, seven weeks. Mm. And the insight really for tier two and tier three markets is that customers are underserved. There are no real quality online or offline options for them in terms of price selection and quality. And obviously you're giving them convenience. But when we go into these tier two, tier three markets, customers come and tell us that, hey, I actually couldn't find this selection anywhere else, yeah. right? Or I couldn't find this you know, quality control anywhere else. And so we think we have an even stronger value prop in those markets mm. and the cost. So is that going to now be a priority and a focus in terms Absolutely. of expansion? Because as you said, these are underserved markets and Absolutely. perhaps uh, with the kind of growth that you've seen in Nasik, for instance, is it is it, uh, you know, ch changing your mix in terms of prioritization? Absolutely. So we plan to launch, you know, the idea is to launch at least a dozen cities over the next two quarters. Uh, and then we'll expand from there. But right now, we've got visibility launching a dozen cities, and that includes, you know, Ahmedabad's, Chandigarh's, Kanpur's of the world, the, you know, 
the Vizags of the world, the indoors of the world. So, you know, all of that we're launching over the next two quarters and we'll expand from there. But absolutely, so one, you know, we are expanding geographically. Two, in terms of new categories, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, today one of the big things that, you know, even for this financing that really got investors excited is that, you know, we launched a bunch of new categories last yeah. quarter. We're talking about consumer electronics, general merchandise, high utility apparel, mm. and even, uh, you know, beauty and cosmetics, right? And so, you know, we launched all those four categories. Effectively, in the first quarter since launch, it's already doing today, the run rate is well over 1,200 crores of scale, right? Mm. Annualized, obviously. Mm. But, you know, in the first four or five months of launching a category, you get to 1,200 crores of scale and growing, mm. you know, 15, 18% month on month. It's, a, it's an unbelievable, rendi- like a vote of confidence in the product market fit. So we're very excited about that as well. I, I'll, I'll talk to you about, you know, deepening the product pipeline in just a second, but I want to pick up on what you just said. Uh, and I think, I can't remember if it was you or somebody else within the quick commerce community who talked about the fact that what's happening in quick commerce today is what happened with Flipkart and Amazon. Uh, when when they took off, you know, right. when, when they really uh, sort of hit that sweet spot as far as the market is concerned. But you know, what was the expectation with quick commerce was that it was going to be low value, low ticket size transactions. Uh, nobody expected that you guys would be delivering on electronics, cosmetics, and so on and so forth. So the lines between e-commerce and quick commerce, I mean, where do you draw those? It's a great question. Look, and I think the candid reality is that we're still figuring out the answer to that question. I think all, our entire philosophy and selection expansion is what our customers asking. Right, for us to deliver. And we can see that in our search data, we can see that in our browse data, we can see that in the feedbacks, and obviously we can see that in one-to-one conversations. But you know, today all the categories we're launching are coming, you know, data-driven what customers expect on the platform. And what I'll tell you, Shireen, that's interesting is that expectation is evolving over time, mm. right? So if you asked me 24 months ago, or just when you're starting 18 months ago, were people searching for Bode earphones, or were people searching for, let's say, Lacme you know, yeah. products? Yeah. The answer is no, but over time, as people got habituated with the service, they actually started in expanding their universe of what they search for and hope, hope for on the platform. So, you know, I think it's impossible to tell right, how many more categories customers will ask for for us. But, you know, if I have to think about it first principles, I think there are certain very high consideration categories mm. that we don't have product market fit in and we would not be interested in doing. Like what? Like smartphones, mm. right? Or, for example, high value electronics. Um, or, you know, for example, you know, long tail fashion, mm. right? Or furniture, mm. categories like that. And so, you know, those categories I'd expect no, it's not a binary zero or one. Right, it's, right. I'd expect a lower degree of product market fit versus categories like meat and seafood, like general merchandise, consumer electronics, and obviously grocery and fresh. So these high consideration, high stakes, high value purchases, mm. that I think we'll have less product market fit in, and we see that in the data. Um, so that obviously is a little bit of a harder line, mm. but in general, consumers are expanding our expectations every day. So, but you know, speaking of consumers expanding your expectations every day, what's the mix currently, uh, grocery and non-grocery for you on Zepto? Now, you know, without going into the specifics, I, what I'll tell you is, um, it depends on how you define grocery and non-grocery. Yeah. But you know, it's a it's a large chunk. I mean, it's over all like the non, let's say, food items, anything that's non-food, non-fresh, non-meat, etc. That would be about you know, 25, 30% plus of the platform mm-hmm. in that zone. Again, very, very broad number. Um, but it's growing, like I mentioned, especially these new categories are growing further. And we're trying to figure out, are there more use cases beyond these four categories? So for example, you know, we're going deep into um, meat and seafood as yeah. a category, right? But that's yeah. obviously you know, a category that hasn't really been cracked yet in the country. Uh, you know, I, I'll get to what next on on uh, the private label side, so to speak. But I just want to build on, uh, you know, the, the skepticism with respect to quick commerce was that, look, uh, how are you going to do this? How will the unit economics work? And what's happening today is that it has taken off. Yeah. Uh, there is a con- clear consumer buy-in, yeah. and you just pointed out that at a store level, you're pretty much at break-even at yeah. this point in time, and uh, that's the kind of numbers that uh, Blinkit is uh, is. Del- Delivering on as well. In fact, it's expected to be the next big thing after mm. after Zomato. It certainly got the government looking mm. at you guys. Mm. Uh, you know, you've got the Traders Association saying this needs to be regulated. It's hurting the small stores. It's hurting the Kirana stores. The Commerce Minister has come out and said, "Look, we cannot take pride in the growth in e-commerce. We have to ensure that uh, it's a level playing field." Does that concern you? So I'll give you a little bit of a long answer, Shane, yeah. if you'll allow me. Right. You know, the way that we look at it today is. 
you know, grocery and household essentials in India. Depends on what categories you include, don't include. It's about 650 billion FY23, growing 9% KGA. By FY29, it becomes 850 billion, right? 200 billion dollars of just incremental consumption. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine for a moment, just like a fanta fantasy, right? We build a business double the size of Flipkart and Amazon, about 30 billion in GMV, right? Even if you build a business like that, it is one sixth of the incremental consumption from FY23 to FY29. Mm. Right? So our simple answer to that is everybody's going to grow. Mm. Right? In this, like, you know, modern trade is going to grow, e-commerce is going to grow, quick commerce is going to grow, Kirana stores are going to grow. Uh, and look, we, we also deeply believe in empowering local entrepreneurs. We have hundreds of local entrepreneurs that run stores at Zepto. You know, people that would have been running a restaurant that come in and put you know, a small amount of capital, in some cases even take you know, loans that we help them with and start their own business and make mm. money out of it. So we mm. believe in empowering the local entrepreneur and we believe that there's so much incremental consumption to go that even if you build double the size of Flipkart, which is still one-sixth of the incremental scale. And look, most importantly, I'll tell you one last thing is that you know, really you know, what excites Kevali and I and what excites the whole team at Zepto, it's not about the scale or the valuation. I think if we can build a truly exceptional internet company mm -hmm. in India that can be benchmarked to the Mercado Libres, the Coupangs, the new banks of the world, the Ubers of the world, the Airbnbs of the world, even in China, the Meituans of the world, the Pinduoduos of the world, we build, let's say, a $70, $80 billion mm -hmm. company that's generating a billion dollars of free cash flow. Mm -hmm. If we could do that, it's going to be a huge moment in the internet ecosystem. It'll be a Flipkart moment times two. Mm. If investors see that you can create this much scale in a billion plus of FCF, what you're going to see is financing in this country will 20x mm. in private markets. You'll have, not forget about the, the tens of millions of mm. you know, middle to lower class jobs, you'll have millions of like high quality engineering product manager data science jobs. And we think we just need to, like, you know, today the city of Shanghai yeah. has got a bigger internet ecosystem than India times 10, plus, mm. plus, plus. Mm. Just, and that's not even the biggest city yeah. for internet in China. Yeah. So there's so much growth for the internet ecosystem. We mm. think if we nail it, and there are a couple other companies that could nail it, we could just revitalize the entire ecosystem. And so that's what, that's what we're trying to do. So yeah, I, think, I, I, get, I get the fact that you believe that the opportunity for growth and the headroom for growth is enormous from here. Yeah. But let me talk specifically about the concerns that have been raised. Sure. And I would imagine that the government at some point will perhaps reach out to you guys, uh, you know, for, for consultations sure, or sure. perhaps not, I don't know. Uh, some of the concerns are that, look, uh, you know, you're being able to offer discounts and that's putting the Kirana store at a disadvantage, that you're bypassing the aggregators and, and the sort of distributors and dealing with the FMCG companies directly. I mean, how do you respond to that? And if there were to be any intervention on some of these issues, how's that likely to impact you? So two things, right? like I mentioned, one, you know, we are effectively you know, running a marketplace. We've got like a couple hundred partners. Um, and you know, what we're doing is not really new, right? Like if you look at e modern trade, e-commerce, et cetera, it's all pretty much the same in terms of the back-end supply chain. So I don't think it's unique to us really, like that, that uh, problem statement. And two, you know, you know, like I mentioned, I also just think that um, you know, everything that we're doing is mm. basically like unlocking structural leverage in the system, right? Building efficiency in the system. Yeah. Um, and using that efficiency to actually create higher quality jobs at scale, right? You know, just you know, it's a miracle that a company that didn't exist 36 months ago is now employing 70,000 people, and yeah. this is quality formal mm. income that can be tracked. In many cases, it can be taxed, right? Uh, it is you know better than the that, below minimum that's, wage. That's under going to be your piece. pitch to the government. <laughs> no, look, and I think yeah, no, it's not even a pitch. Like I tell you, very, like that, you know, which I was giving that whole you know ecosystem. No, it's a, it's a fair one. No, no, no. I you know, I was yeah. giving the whole ecosystem growth pitch is because you know we actually in good faith want to build this country, right? And we think the internet ecosystem has to mm -hmm. do that. And so we're not trying to like undercut. We're not. We're just trying to do the right thing. And I think the government will realize that. And you know, our conversations with them have been productive, have been constructive. You know, we're open to feedback. We're open to figuring out how we can make our growth more inclusive. Mm. But uh, when did they last reach out to you on on, on this issue? Well, have, I mean, I think we we just generally over the past couple of years, you know, across multiple departments, right? Uh, whether it's you know, folks that are involved in capital markets, whether it's folks that are involved in taxation, whether there are folks that are involved in um, you know, FDI. All, all of these folks in good faith are you know, asking us, okay, we get the growth, we get the fact you're bringing billions of dollars of capital to the country, we get the fact that you're employing 70,000 yeah. people and growing 200%. How do we make this growth more inclusive? In many cases, we've initiated it. So, I mean, obviously, recently, we don't, have, we don't have active conversations, but we have conversations with them in good faith. And that's the, that's the broader point, right? Mm -hmm. We are a good faith company, mm -hmm. right? We want to build for India, yeah. and we feel like we're an Indian startup that could help, maybe, in a small way.